people go to the hospital to get healthier. But we found something hiding in hospital water could be hurting some patients, even killing them. Let's see what's brewing. I'm Jenna Bourne, and I'm an investigative reporter at 10 Tampa Bay. If you're new here, welcome to our caffeine-fueled, homemade deep dive into issues that matter to you. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. COVID-19 may have you thinking about your health more than ever, but months before the pandemic swept across the nation, 10 Investigates started looking into a different deadly infection. I wanna start this story by introducing you to a woman I met before the pandemic. She was grieving the loss of her aunt. I was completely devastated. I cried for hours, but she's gone. Ever since Cheryl Marshall's aunt died, she says her favorite place, Mayaka River State Park, feels empty. She could go there and just relax and forget about everything that was going on in her life, her health, everything. When Lois Girardi got a lung transplant to Tampa General Hospital, her family thought she'd finally get to enjoy her favorite park again, but that didn't happen. It sucks. It just plain sucks. Girardi died at Tampa General a year later. She was like a mom to me, a best friend. I miss her. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think of her. Girardi's family says she died from an infection many people have never heard of, non-tuberculous mycobacteria, or NTM. Here's the thing, it's not unusual for NTM to be in tap water, and for the most part, that's okay. It's typically not a threat to healthy people, but for vulnerable patients, the bacteria can be dangerous, even fatal. A patient with a harmed or an ill immune system who can't find it, they are much more prone. So how common is it here? That's hard to track because medical facilities aren't required to report individual infections to the state. We found eight lawsuits from people who say they got NTM infections from a machine used during their surgery. Three of those Floridians died. Three of the lawsuits came from patients in Tampa Bay. Lois Girardi, who had surgery at Tampa General. A man who had surgery at Northside Hospital in St. Petersburg. And a veteran in Treasure Island who had surgery at a VA hospital out of state. But that was just a drop in the bucket. At Duke University Medical Center, an NTM outbreak from 2013 to 2015 was linked to nearly 100 patients getting infected. 26 of them died. The cause was routine care with hospital tap water, an unfiltered water used in a machine that regulates patients' body temperatures during surgery. None of the Florida lawsuits we found were against the hospitals. They were all filed against Livanova, the company that makes 3T heater cooler machines. I know that's a mouthful, but stick with me here. The machine aerosolized water, turning it into mist during surgery. If that water had non-tuberculous mycobacteria in it, that could cause an infection. It's especially risky if the machine wasn't cleaned right. Livanova agreed to pay out $225 million in settlements last year, but public health experts warn NTM infections often start with the hospital water that goes into the machines. Some hospitals have made changes to help prevent NTM in their water. Duke installed water filters in operating rooms and made engineering changes like increasing water flow to better flush their pipes. Greenville Health System in South Carolina, they installed water filters in operating rooms in 2014 after more than a dozen patients were infected during surgery. 82-year-old Thomas Fowler was one of them. It felt like something just pulling me apart and the claw or something just stretching me inside that. Okay, so those hospitals in the Carolinas made changes, but what about the hospitals here in Tampa Bay where the patients who sued Livanova had their surgeries? In 2018, Florida's Agency for Healthcare Administration said Tampa General Hospital didn't have a procedure to identify waterborne pathogens and fined them $12,800. The state agency also says three patients in 2017 had mycobacteria non-tuberculous documented by the hospital that year. 
but TGH's infection preventionist didn't investigate how the patients were infected and couldn't rule out that those infections came from the hospital's water. Both TGH and the state tell us the hospital corrected those problems in 2018. TGH would not do an interview for this story. Neither would Northside Hospital. Their spokesperson told us Northside Hospital has not found NTM in its water supply. But she also wouldn't confirm whether any NTM testing has actually been done at Northside. The FDA has gotten more than 400 reports of NTM-related injuries, deaths, and other problems connected to those machines, even after hospitals started more rigorous cleaning. Livanova tells us it got FDA clearance earlier this year for a change to their machines that reduces the risk of aerosolizing water. We've all never been the same since she left. <laughs> Marshall says she doesn't want this to happen to any more patients, so other families don't have to go through the same heartbreak. None of the Florida NTM infections we just told you about were reported to the state. The Florida Department of Health tells us medical facilities only have to notify them if there is an outbreak. They don't have to tell them about individual cases. So I reached out to St. Pete State Senator Daryl Rusan about that. Don't freak out about us not wearing masks. We shot this interview before the COVID-19 pandemic hit Florida. Senator Rusan is a member of the Florida Senate Committee on Health Policy, and he said he had no idea hospitals do not have to report individual NTM infections to the state. People go to hospitals because they expect to be made healthy. They're in compromised physical and medical conditions. They should be able to rely on the safety of hospitals, hospital staff, and hospital atmospheres, environments. And so to the extent that this fails them, it makes me feel very upset. So he did something about it. In August, he sent this letter to the state surgeon general calling on the Florida Department of Health to ensure proper reporting of NTM infections in our state and saying he's interested in filing legislation that would require such reporting. We'll let you know what happens next. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an episode of What's Brewing, and I'll see you next time.